welcome back to another new world video this time we're going to jump straight in it and we're going to get in with dynasty shipyard guide now this technically isn't an end game dungeon guide this is not level 60 um i think the requirement is level 55 to, to enter this dungeon or the recommendations is anyway but dynasty shipyard is on the mutations track so a lot of new players coming back to new world will while to level up go through this dungeon um and then they'll also do this dungeon when they start doing the end game mutations so it's like a decent little guide to go through that i'm going to commentate all the way through it again on a previous run we've done i'm going to read out all the possible mechanics i can i can ever think of if you ever think i've missed anything comment section down below we can always amend some of the future uploads and if you like these style of videos make sure comment section down below let me know any future guides you want me to make any dungeons i've missed so far any more you want me to go back on because we've got a lot of ultimate guide series uh, already on the channel so if there's anything you can think of comment section down below and then a quick cheeky plug for my Twitch. It's just nice and easy. It's the same as the YouTube channel. It's just twitch.tv forward slash Liam H. So check me out over there. You'll see me live playing this game all the time, especially with all the big Brimstone Sands uh, updates that are coming out soon as well. You'll, you'll always see me live. And then I've left this little graphic open behind me as well. This is the live Steam charts from the 12th of September. As you can see, we hit a peak yesterday of nearly 41,000 concurrent players. That is massively up, as you can see there, in the past couple of months there. We were finally going up and up and up on the charts. Uh, so a lot more people return to this game, plus all the huge updates that are coming out in the next couple of weeks and months. So yeah, like I said, like and subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff, and check me out on Twitch. But uh, let's get into the guide, and I'll uh, talk your way through Dynasty. Okay, first things first, knowing what weapons to use, and ideally what weapons not to use now. When you're first entering Dynasty, like I said, you probably want to be quite level 60 yet, so it doesn't matter if you don't have the absolute perfect weapons, but it's good to understand at least, um, you know, what weapons are good and what weapons aren't, so then you know if you're doing good damage or not. Right, so all of the uh, mobs inside of Dynasty are all these corrupted ones, so this is the chart here that you can see. Thrust damage does 20% added damage compared to your basic flak damage that you'll have from any of your weapons. Nature damage is plus 15%, so this brings in healers a little bit. And then arcane damage is the biggest one at plus uh, 30%. Now, there's no arcane weapons in the game, so for that, you'd have to use uh, the gems. I think it's amethyst gems, I'm pretty sure, for uh, arcane. So you can slot, if you really want to, amethyst gems on all of your um, weapons, if you prefer. And then ideally, if you want to be doing the best damage, you want to be taking the thrust weapons. So they are spear, um, heavy attack on the sword. Not that that really matters, but in general, just, just so you know. You've got spear, heavy attack on the sword. You've got bow. You've got rapier. You've got musket. I'm just going to use musket and PVA. It's absolutely awful. Um, so there are your thrust weapons. So make, uh, and blunderbuss as well. Don't forget as well. Yeah, blunderbuss. So uh, make sure you uh, use the correct weapons when you go into this. If you can use a higher dex build as possible, start getting towards that 300 um, dex mark. That, that'll help. But don't worry. If you've got weapons like Warhammer, which is neutral, or if you're a mage... Um, as you look in here mages is neutral um ice isn't great i would not use ice in here ideally um warhammer is actually minus 15 percent, so i'd probably stay away from warhammer uh, void is okay um any lightning gems are okay on your weapons and then your sword and shield slash damage and your hatchets and stuff they're okay uh, but yeah weapons to basically stay away from if you can again you're not level 60 so you don't have to absolutely max this try your best not to take any ice gauntlet mages in there and try not to all use warhammers now however if you were to say stack an arcane gem on your on your on your war on your warhammer you would at least then go over the threshold and you'd be doing some decent damage ice in general i, I would just try and stay away from this dungeon it's not the best um and then obviously your nature damage that's going to come from from your healer a little bit uh, but yeah they're the best weapons to use anyway so try and use your thrust and use your arcane gems on your weapons if, you, if you're struggling for dps add those in there and then try and stay away from ice is pretty much the biggest one uh, right let's get into the guide all right so here we go we've started this is a pre-recording so i'm just going to film over this and kind of commentate through it and hopefully help you guys out as soon as you enter the dungeon here there's just a handful of mobs the musketeer and then there's one in the background over there the ideal thing to do especially uh, I'll, I'll try not to mention mutators too much but most of these strats will all be the same when, it, when you do come to mutators if you're using this for like a mutation guide i'll try and mention a few mutation parts in here as well um, but essentially you want to pull all of the mobs to the musket because obviously the muskets range and then that way you can fight them in a little area and uh, do a lot more damage but that initial part is usually quite easy like i said pull them all to the musket um, and then move on to this next part now in an ideal situation here what you do you'll pull this guy at the top see this corruption mob here you'll pull him initially and then you'll pull the closest one you can see there we just grab weld him 
before you pull all the mobs that are around the boss because the mob's going to throw this spinny uh, circle. I don't even know what you want to call it. We'll call it a spinny circle. Why not? That's going to do quite a bit of damage. So stay away from that. Um, the boss is also does this like purple beam of damage. So watch out when that when that drops. Obviously, just dodge out of it. And like the big one you've just seen from the boss there as well. When she starts... There you go. It is coming up again. When she starts absorbing all of this purple, like sort of beam of light around her, she's going to do a big slam attack on the floor. So all you got to do is either shield up if you're the tank or dodge, um, obviously, if you're close by. Now, a lot of mobs, once you kill her, is that they're all then going to spawn as well. So get ready for this second wave of mobs. Be prepared for that. Obviously, if you're a tank and you're trying to grab all the aggro, make sure you keep an eye on where your healer is so then you can pick up all these extra mobs that come in that second wave. This fight is quite an easy fight. There's not too much to pick up. And you know you've completed this mini area. Once this orb pops up, which you just hold E on, or which you change your, you know, your, your object button, uh, you just hold E on, on that, and then it unlocks the door, which we're going to go through on our left now. Quick one on mutations. When you go into this next area, this whole beach area, on mutations, make sure you kill every single mob. Because what that means is later on in the in the dungeon, you don't have to do any more um, just before you get to the final boss. So ideal here is to pull some of the mobs in. Go all the way up until the musket man. If you can see him just on the left of the screen there now, that's as far as I like to go with, with groups unless the, unless we're like massively over, you know, over here. Now, as quite a few of us are all fairly experienced for Dynasty, we, we pulled a lot of these mobs together. One thing I would suggest you do if you're like around that level 55 area and this is the first time you've ever done it, is attack that first little group of mobs up until the musket that I just mentioned and then move on to where this boss is uh, later on. Now, a really good thing to do is group all of these mobs together. If you've got like one player with a, with a great axe, you use the grav well. That's really, really good. Spears, make sure you're using your sweep skill because obviously that'll just drop them all so then they're not all constantly hitting everybody. Sweep is actually quite a good skill to use in this dungeon. Uh, more so later on as well. Use all your normal uh, spear skills as well. If you, you should have spear users bow users you know make sure you're doing as much aoe damage as possible um and you just want to try and pull all these mobs together some of the outlying mobs there you just need to be aware of as well now what you've got to do is a little before you can go through to the next door as you can see there's these powder kegs underneath the ships now there's two ships this one that we're looking at now and the one that we've just gone past over there you have to click on both of those before you progress into the next room okay it's a bit of a fast guide this one because dynasty is quite easy to do nowadays it's hard to hard to not you know progress through now there's a dog here at the background you don't have to aggro this dog but as we're going back to pick up the first chest which is here you can take the dog if you like if you if you're really worried about your dps or you're trying to do stupidly fast run you can skip that dog so we're just going to burn him down and uh, open up the first chest now some people even sneak and try and pick up this chest before you kill any mobs doesn't really matter especially if you're not doing like specific speed runs um so i'll just point it out there on the video as well because i knew i would have mentioned that once you've done those two you come up here one person can go over to the door and they set down the barrels you set down the fireworks from here the fireworks will set off and explode on those barrels like i'm trying to show you on this uh this guy video and explode the door now on the other side you're gonna have a mini boss and i think is it three uh melee mobs let me just double check as we go in here yeah i think it's three melee mobs and the boss now two different strats here as the tank you either take the big boss on your own or you take the three mobs you try and split them up the big whirlwind uh, mechanic there with the, dra so the dragon whirlwind. Again, stay away from these. You'll hear these mini bosses. They'll they'll shout out the when they're gonna do like a big attack, and also the big purple and 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 pink circles. That's what you want to stay away from. Whenever you see these purple or pink circles coming from these mage bosses, make sure you just dodge away. Or if you're the tank, you can shield up through most of them. So yeah, split them up into two. Tank, you take maybe the three melee mobs. Everybody else can DPS burn down the main boss. I'm just going to pause it here as we come into this a little bit because this is a strat that we've now been doing. Now watch here. So you've got two mages and then the one big boy here. So one mage here, one mage here, and then the big boy here. The best strat now, I can't show you this as I'm not tanking, but the best strat now even for mutations is the tank goes and aggroes the, the, the main big man with the sword and then basically runs around this side, around the back of like this little mini, you know what you call it, garden area here. And then basically tanks. That boss just walking backwards and forwards away from it so it doesn't actually hit you. And then all the DPS players take out the two mages, okay? You should be... And then the healer as well. As a three DPS and one healer, you should be fine. Now, the tank could take basically no damage whatsoever if you're following um, that sort of strat. Like I said, you can even use that in mutations. Um, as we're quite over gear scored here, we're going to probably fight them all together. But just be, be wary of that strat. That's the best strat to do. Tank takes the big guy, Commander Chen, all the way around that other side of that sort of garden area and all the dps people fight the two mages and, and the healer 
um we're doing it slightly different in this guide video because that's what i like to do i like to show you guide videos where it's not the most perfect run because if i show you a perfect run you won't understand what to do if things go wrong. You know what I mean? You, you won't, so if you're watching this guy video before you've ever done Dynasty, you'll be thinking, oh, that was a perfect run. But when you do it for the first time, it might not be a perfect run. And then you might, you know, sort of shit yourself a little bit and be like, oh no, you know, like what's going on? So here we go. The tank has separated at least, which is good for this part. Um, Commander Chen. And then you can basically with this one, it's also stamina based. Like some of the other bosses in the game, uh, some of the Genesis bosses will do all your heavy attacks. And if you see the little yellow bar, just below the health bar that's the stamina bar once that goes all the way down to the bottom or to zero um the boss will basically go down on his knees and you can max dps for a couple of seconds before he comes back up just be wary of all the huge swishing attacks basically every time he's about to do a swishing attack as the tank you can just walk backwards and none of them will hit you or, or full shield up everybody else just just pull to the side don't be in the full line of sight then you don't get any of those big heavy attacks hitting you um and that, that that's literally the easiest way to do that fight so pull the two mages apart and let the tank take the big boss and then all focus on the big boss at the end uh, here's one of your chests so make sure you don't miss this one i've seen a lot of people um do dynasty runs on like twitch and stuff like that and they always miss that chest uh, you got a little moat there to the left if you want that as well now best strat here you'll see a lot of people let me just pause quickly as well you'll see a lot of people run down that way okay and they'll skip these mobs but i'm going to tell you why you shouldn't do that okay so basically there's only three mobs here there's a musket a spear guy and um the dog right so if you kill these here in a few minutes when we go into the next part where we're going to defend the kegs you'll see why because these mobs get triggered a lot with the impending mobs that come on these mini waves so kill these three mobs before you uh before you move on to the next part because honestly i swear to god the amount of times i've seen it and then you get overrun a little bit especially in the high mutations and stuff uh, but for the normal run if you're again brand new to level 50 and you're around about level 55 when you're doing this um you should be fine so you've got a mini boss and a dog mini boss if you want to call them that kill these two these two are quite simple they do do chunky damage especially the dog so, so beware of that and the mini boss has got a shield so you have to do some uh, stamina damage to, to knock him down and then you'll see one or two mobs lying around that you should probably kill as well before you start the waves now the waves is where like mechanics come into this part of the dungeon a lot um other than the mages who do this big spinny spinny attack you should probably be aware of those but um, we'll show you this now so there's normally one or two mobs floating around take out um sorry not take out use e on that once you plant the keg and you'll start to see waves of mobs coming you'll get i can pause it here you'll get waves of mob coming from this direction in the background normally only one mob now looking to my right so back where we came from you'll normally get at least two mobs come from there and then from behind us so if you want to talk it like north east south and west behind us a couple mobs so essentially they all come in but what they're trying to do is all the mobs are trying to run straight to that barrel and destroy it. The barrel's got a small amount of health. If they destroy the barrel, essentially they're trying to stop you from blowing up the ship, right? If they destroy the barrel, uh, you got to start again. So if you're trying to save time, uh, the dungeon won't fail or anything like that. But if you're trying to save time, you need to try and do this in one run. So the trick is you get all your spear users with sweep to stand at the four, at the four points. Or, and, or if warhammers have a shockwave, uh, some of the blunderbuss pull skills will work. Uh, if you are using a nice mage, you could even use the frost wall. I'm um, trying to think of any others that, that you could do it with as well. Ooh, uh, shield users, if you've got shield bash or shield rush, that'll work as well. Essentially, you need to hit the mobs just once or twice as they're running towards the barrel. That'll basically then make them forget about the barrel in some ways. And then you take the aggro and you fight them all in this central area here. Um, so just be aware of that. You want spear users with sweep. That's one of the best ones. As you can see, they're all running in for that barrel. You want to hit them all once or twice each. And then once you grab the aggro away from the barrel as you can see this is not a perfect way of doing it because they are doing damage to that barrel you do not want to be doing what we're doing here eat see torch in our group here is fighting them right by the barrel if they do any aoe attacks whatsoever that will damage the barrel which you don't want you want to try and pull those mobs to this central location so you see here i'm going to go over and grab this guy i'm just going to ping him once or twice grab as much aggro as we can tanks are best to pretty much stay where our tank is here in this central area because once everybody's hit the mobs once or twice use your defiant stance use your taunt them all into the center and kind of like aoe them now one little strut you can do there's gonna be three waves by the way one little strut you can do if you're feeling confident on the final wave all you've got to do is grab the aggro of all the mobs and then run on to the next zone once you grab that aggro because they'll basically yeah you could call it an exploit if you like and um, but they still attack you a lot they still do a lot of damage and you can quickly fail if you miss just one mob because that one mob will attack the uh, barrel um as you can see here we've killed all the mobs so that barrel's now exploded and we can move on to the next phase. But if you wish, and a lot of people do this in mutators, 
you can grab all the aggro and just run in this direction because if you run here the mobs will just follow you so just uh so bear in mind in that so we're going to move on to the next stage now you have to do this mechanic this waves mechanic in terms of destroying the barrels one more time but in like a different location so as you can see here now we're just going to run on to that next part but um if you if you do if you do the running away method which i don't massively approve on because it is a bit of an exploit i guess um you're not technically fighting the mobs but you are risking it because if you miss one hold the barrel basically by the time you get to this point here they'll just despawn because they've not destroyed the barrels in time so on this next point here now a couple of mobs as you first move in nothing crazy just a spear mob and uh, there's a musketeer at the back as well just burn through those and once you've killed them um there's another barrel here on this right hand side as you can see and that's where you that's where you want to sort of uh you know set that down but i'm just i'm just trying to get through this part of the video here we go right so you set it here there's also a musket guy there i advise you to take the musket guy out first you don't need to take this little shipyard work route at all um completely pointless me doing that don't even know why i did that in the, when i was doing the recording not a clue absolutely pointless mob that you don't need now same strap all the mobs are going to come from the, the four different directions okay they're going to spawn and come in on the waves hit them once or twice sweep them uh what, what are we got shield bash them um what else ice wall them if you're taking a nice mage again you shouldn't but if you are and um but yeah yeah war hammers as well they can use path of destiny they can use a shockwave hit them once to trigger them and then basically pull them into this central location ideally the tank should stay in this circle on the ground it's like a wheel see it on the floor the tank should stay there at all times because once everyone's hit the mobs once or twice they hit the fine stance they pull all the mobs to them you can aoe them it's a lot easier so be wary of this you want to try and fight the mobs as far away from that uh, barrel as you possibly can or else they'll destroy it so we're not doing a great job here on this run as you can see it's not the it's not the most world-class of runs you can see look they're hitting that barrel a couple of times doing a little bit of damage to it you just gotta hit them once or twice to take that aggro pull them all in the dog's a bit of a pain in here as well the dog does like a quite a bit of damage to be fair compared to all the other ones and also watch out for there's a spear guy he doesn't attack all the spear guys in this dungeon do an attack where they kind of like lean down and when they do that lean down you want to dodge backwards because they'll do a big spinny swirl attack with the spear and does so much damage there's a ever so slightly hidden chest here in the background as well make sure you pick that up that is one of the stockpiles where you can get some of the best loot so uh, yeah make sure you don't pick that out uh, or miss that out sorry but if you've got one of the uh, expedition missions uh, which you'll get from evan scale by the way it's another bit of the guide if you ever want to do more runs of dynasty shipyard but get bonuses uh, make sure you go to evan scale go to your faction leader and uh, pick up the missions from there you can normally pick up like two or three if you're lucky and every time you're doing the run. another chest here not too sure why you get two chests actually no idea you get two chests for doing on par i guess i don't know now this next fight is actually quite interesting i see a lot of people fail this in both normal dynasty and mutators sorry to mention mutators i know this is just like a normal dynasty guide but it's one of those guides where because it's an endgame dungeon it does work the same now what you're gonna have once we go in here some groups will use an off tank okay which basically means one melee dps will bring with them um a tower shield and a sword okay just to switch weapons for just this fight okay i'll explain why you're gonna fight isabella for the first time in this game um here now you've got two dogs but one that we're looking at here in this in this cage i'm just going to show you on this video because pre-recorded and then one in the other cage now they will come out in the second phase of the fight you first got to fight um isabella which we'll show you and then also keep an eye on this ship in the background because you're in the second phase um you will have to have one ranged person either the healer or one of your mages or if anyone's got a bow to ping a couple of spawning musketeers now they don't do stupid damage these musketeers but they are a bit annoying if you don't sort of pick them up so keep that in mind okay so best thing for the tank to do here in my opinion is to stand behind isabella because then isabella will face the tank she does a lot of ground sweeps and aoe attacks and, and big directional damage in my opinion tank should stand on the other side everybody else on this side then you're doing the, the the rogue or the back backstab damage if you like um our tank wants to do it a different way which is fine means everyone else can stand on this side and you're going to hit isabella a handful of times now one, one one more thing to notice see these little small um group of mobs that she spawns she'll spawn them on the furthest player away stood so if you want all the mobs to spawn really really close to the boss so you can do aoe damage even the healer try and stand quite close to I isabella's back um but then they, they don't spawn now as you can see here she's got three or four different uh, abilities that she uses now they're all big directional damage so if she's starting to face you and she's starting to talk about like the damage that she's about to do just be just be aware to just dodge to the back 
or to the side sorry and then obviously you want to yeah so it's all of her damage she has like the pistol shot she has the spread pistol shot she has the sweep and it's all directional damage so if she's not facing you she's not going to hit you occasionally if your dps is really really slow she will turn around and aim a pistol at you as an as a random individual even if you've not got the aggro and fire that at you dodge that but if your dps isn't slow you won't even see that mechanic so it's mostly the sweep and then the pistol fires in like the directional damage so always dps plays in healer and behind isabella tank obviously in front you'll do more damage you'll receive less damage it's bug standard right now once you've done enough damage here so what is that maybe 20 percent of the damage she'll kneel down and she'll start talking to you with um some of the things she says and she'll portal over there now this is one key mechanic because i don't actually show you this in this run so i want to explain it when she portals over here for a couple of seconds she'll be talking and then you'll hear cannon fire now the cannon fire comes from all the way in the background and it basically just does some uh fire aoe damage on the floor best thing to do is to all gather by this cage over in the corner until you hear the cannon fire because the cannon fire will fire on the range players basically um so you hear the cannon fire and then you move from here and then you run and you start doing your dps okay so as you can see here we didn't do this you can see a couple of us are spread around and then you'll see cannon fire three cannon fires are coming over and it's going to basically go where a player was stood at that point now you also need one of your ranged players to be aware see there you go muskets in the background have just spawned do we get another click see there you go muskets in the background have spawned here so they'll spawn pretty much as soon as just after the cannon fire so make sure you've got one person uh, taken down the muskets so then you're not getting randomly pinged and that uh, additional damage this is exactly the same fight as as was before all the all the dps players try and stand behind isabella whenever you hear the cannon fire move away because if you don't the cannon fire is going to drop on top of you and that's going to do a, a little bit of um sort of aoe fire damage now at this point as well once she starts bursting into flames and disappears now at this point when she moves this is where you need to split up now I, it doesn't really matter which one you choose too much but one of your, your 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 main tank needs to go for one dog and everybody else goes for the other dog if you have your off tank which some people run my personal opinion you don't really need it that's more for groups who can't can't really dodge and do the mechanics properly um what i like to do if i'm tanking i go for as you're facing now i go for the left dog now the left dog does a lot more fire breathing damage and it's a lot easier to just walk backwards forwards and backwards which i'll try and explain in a minute everybody else the dps is this dog and gets all the heals okay tank should be able to stay alive without any heals whatsoever when i'm tanking this dungeon even in mutation 10 easy i'll take the other dog not a problem you know what i mean like heal doesn't have to worry so you'll split up into basically two teams tank will go one way there you go i'm just waiting for our tank to tell us where he's going in this run you know what i mean there we go tanks going over to this left one here everybody else is going to fire on this one now i'll try and show you if i can here we go so the dog comes out here now the, now the aggro is really really rough that's the only thing okay so between you guys here if you do have your off tank off tank grab that aggro as soon as you can or it'll just basically jump on the healer as it always does same with the other one that the, the main tank is fighting aggro you gotta be really really quick to hit him and take that taunt or else he'll just jolt over and hit the other group we're all gonna be fighting this one here uh get in the in the void puddles to do some more damage um basically try and hit the dog but you know in the back whoever's got the aggro just make sure you dodge away like i'm hopefully going to show you here <laughs> not, not at that moment i'm not just dodge away pull them back now as you can see in the background here the tank now this is the best strat if you're tanking this you don't know what the hell to do the other dog will basically do timed attacks okay so it'll either swipe at you and then stay still for a couple seconds or it'll fire breathe at you and then stay still for a couple of seconds in that couple of seconds in between when it does the fire breath uh, and it does the swipe you should always be slowly moving backwards so then most of the time those hits won't even hit you anyway and then you should drop your shield to regain your stamina that's the biggest hint for the tank okay you want to walk backwards away so basically up and down this back line up against the wall they all literally forwards and backwards just keep loop, looping forwards and backwards hopefully that's you can see that as what we're doing and then like i said shield always up on the fire attacks shield always up on the swipes but then in between that little bit of gap in time especially if you've got stirred the energy perk as you're moving backwards you'll gain us your stamina back and you'll be able to use your shield consistently um, if you want to reduce the damage from the fire attack you can use gemstone dust if you like that should help whereas this dog on this side doesn't do fire breath it just does the big leaping attacks and the swipes so that's why i think this is the best one um for the dps plays to take because if if you take the fire breathing dog uh, you can do a big wipe or you can receive a big wipe because the fire breathing can like hit several players at once so we dps this one down just about survive because I'm, I'm a noob playing a mage in this dungeon 
Um, and then straight as soon as you've done that, see there, the big flame attack. So ideally, you just want to keep moving back. Now, everybody else now, straight on the back of the dog. One, you'll do more damage. And two, when the big flame damage is coming out, you won't take any hits from it. So tanks, if you need more of a guide on how to do this, or if you're really struggling, again, I, I've, I've, jo I've joined mutation groups before. I joined normal dynasty groups before where the tank just doesn't have a clue what to do. That is the best strat. Like I said, just keep slowly walking backwards in between those hits. Drop your shield, gain your stamina back, shield back up. And you shouldn't take any damage whatsoever. Or, or that small of a damage, you can just pot through it. Do you know what I mean? Like a regen pot. Now, there's two mobs here. There's a musketeer and a spear. So you can take these two out. If you want, um, you can pull them around this corner. That way, you don't have to take the hits from the musket and the spear at the same time. Now, I'll explain this next a little bit. Because most of this, you, you will basically be able to skip. You don't have to fight every single mob. But essentially... Up this pathway now to, to, towards where we're eventually going to get to the second to final fight. All down this left hand side and all down this right hand side, there's a couple of different houses. And in those houses, there's, there's a handful of mobs in there. There's a couple of um, there's the shaman mage mobs, which you might need to kill for your expedition missions. Um, I would advise to just do them at the end. Um, but you don't need to kill any of those mobs. So the, the, the key is to go to kill this little mini boss now and get all the way through to the end without aggroing any additional mobs because there's no reason for you to kill them. Um, bar one chest which I'll, I'll explain as well so you want to pick up this um, summoner guang here and the best thing to do is grab the aggro run around this corner since he's going to move away from all of those mobs that are on either side of the houses and you grab the aggro pull around which we did not do ah this is actually a good video because we're showing you what not to do so what we're doing here is we're fighting her in the center and the reason why not to fight her in the center is the chances of you pulling in these external mobs from the left and right side is a lot higher and therefore, you're going to be getting several different mobs sometimes if you fight to the sides. You'll be getting several different mobs jumping on you and you, no needed. You know what I mean, it's not needed. As you can see, there's a couple of mobs walking up and down there now. Now, what I would advise to do at the end up here, on this right hand side, there is another one of those elite stockpiles, elite chests. So you can come back for that at the end. Uh, it's a little tricky. If not, the whole group goes in there. There is a way to exploit and hide behind the chest. But ideally, you just take your group in there at the end of the run um, and you can fight for that elite chest. Which I think are we going to go and do this now? In this group? This, it's, been, it's been about a week since I recorded this, actually. So I forgot what we've done on this run. But I think we're going to go go and take the elite chest now. But you can do this at the end of the run once you've done the final boss. Go up, up in here. Your elite chest is behind me now to the right. And we're just going to kill all these mobs and just take the chest before we go to the final boss. So this is what I was saying about, like, perfect runs to show you on, on, on these YouTube guide videos. Sometimes it's better to show you a random run which doesn't quite go perfect. So then you can see it both ways you can hear the perfect explanation but then also see it when it doesn't quite go right so there's a mage downstairs as well which you need to kill there's about three or four mobs in this house and you go in there so what you don't want to be doing is when you fight the big mage um boss in the center if you pull all of these mobs out of these doors and from these houses sorry it becomes a bit of a pain to do not obviously once you're 65 gear score and you're doing normal dynasty runs just to help out sure those runs aren't going to be hard but if you're like level 55 ish yeah, you, you could, you know, you could struggle in here. So straight up here now. Best thing to do here again, as we go up these stairs, the handful of mobs. There's a musketeer on the right-hand side over here. And then there's the main boss. What I would advise is the tank just takes the main boss. Everybody else jumps on the musketeer first. And then the spearman. And then and then so on. Just because musketeer is a pain in the ass. When he shoots you in the back, it, it does quite a bit of damage. So we are getting there now with this... Uh, but yeah, yeah, like I said, take them all out. It's quite easy. There's no crazy mechanics to explain here. It's just basically burn through the mobs. Same as earlier on. These captains, they've got like a little shield. So a bit of stamina damage on there if you want to take them down. There is a... Oh, yep. Yeah, there's another supply stockpile here. And then we go on to the final boss. Now, the final boss is actually quite fun. I'd like the final boss fight here. Um, I find it fun because there's a couple of mechanics going on at the same time. So it's not just a bog standard, I don't know, a standstill and fight. Like you, you get in some MMOs or... Maybe in some like previous New World Dungeons. This this final fight is quite good. There's some sound triggers to listen out for. And um, there's some visuals to look out for. And then there's also a phase where if you don't do it at the right time, uh, it can cause easier wipes and stuff like that. So it's quite fun. So we'll get, we'll get our team ready and get inside. Go. Right, so the main boss is going to spawn in that background there. This is basically me now explaining it to them in, in while we're going in the dungeon. Um, so we can probably skip this a little bit actually you don't need to see me explain it to them right here we go we're going inside now we're going to fight where the boss comes out now now the key areas to to, to remi remember is this corner here so 
if you're looking in you want to look at like the northeast corner as, as you're facing as you walk in that's a key area we're going to go back there in a minute so this boss now he has some key different attacks that she does so i'm going to show you this one now this is the swirling sort of dragon fire i don't know there's no like name for it now this will go on whoever has the aggro so normally the tank she'll spawn this big uh, fire dragon and just breathe down at the direction of where the aggro was so you, even if you want you can move out the way and it'll fire there do not stand facing that dragon fire okay or it'll pretty much one hit you okay pretty much but the tank can also hold up the shield and that's absolutely fine then you've got this one here now I'm trying to show you all the mechanics hopefully um you'll see this like thin sort of pinky purple sort of like circle it's quite a wide circle though but when this one comes up as you can see there she hits out like a wave uh, the wave you can just dodge through try and put your dodge just before the wave actually gets to you so it registers properly and you can dodge through it and you won't take any damage so there's that mechanic that you've got to watch out for and these will all be um key sound outs as well now after those waves as well tank bear it, watch out she will basically uh, the main boss zhao Kaying, i'm not very good at pronouncing that will always face you and always be ready to do big like it's almost like a small beam so after each of these big mechanics tank just get ready shield up because she'll do a big heavy attack on you and uh so you, you want to make sure that you don't get hit by that he will occasionally oh here we go there's another mechanic she will occasionally um pick out somebody random um and she says a word it's something to it's like to say or something i can't quite work out what the word is that she says it's not like english um now what that means is she'll fire two different beams one after the other just bear in mind you might have to dodge twice if you hear her say that whilst she's facing you so dps plays on the outside keep an eye out now this swirl is another mechanic and this swirl you don't want to be inside once it actually triggers you want to basically run out of the circle or you'll get it down pretty easily and again she'll voice trigger this one and then there's the wave one again you don't want to respawn anyone whilst that obviously wave's about to come out there we go now once this uh sphere of protection if you like comes around her she's gonna spawn two waves of mobs okay a handful of melee and a handful of ranged in the first wave of mobs you just want to kill them kill them as fast as you possibly can once we get to the second wave of mobs uh that's when we we kill them slightly differently now what she will do as well she'll also spawn these little obelisks i don't really know what you call these one or two of these will be dotted around pretty much where you're stood so try and stand very close together where we've been fighting this main boss so far because what will happen here perfect example occasionally again another mechanic that will happen is that same dragon fire attack that, she, that that the main boss does will spawn from the oh it's actually a pedestal it's not an obelisk you can see the name it's a pedestal okay so you don't want to stand near these pedestals it will fire out the dragon breath okay so keep an eye on that now on this second wave of mobs what you want to do is kill all the ranged mobs first so the musketeers and the uh, mage kill them first and then once you've got just melees left pull all the melees into the corner now what you're going to do here is once torch comes over this corner now watch watch the boss now carefully he's going to throw three pedestals okay this is important this is an important mechanic or it makes the fight way harder for the final part of the boss fight he throws three pedestals one pedestal two pedestal and she throws them where you're stood three pedestals once that's on the three pedestals you run all the way over to the other side of the arena because again she will do there you go perfect example she stacks the, we we dictate where she stacks these pedestals okay so she will fire the pedestals at us the three pedestals so we stack in the corner because we're not going to fight anywhere near that corner this is the important bit of this mechanic right and when she does that occasional um attack with the dragon flame it, the dragon flame will come from each one of the pedestals so if you stack all the pedestals on the opposite side of the arena you will never get hit by them in the rest of the fight so that's why we run to the other side of the fight other side of the arena sorry we pull the boss over she'll just come over to the tank everybody else now it's basically a rinse and repeat of all the mechanics that we've already explained you through okay so ideally here don't stand in this one when it's about to do, do the big circle as you can see um all the range players try and stand in if you have a mage that has the void or the healer that has the uh, the void and power circle i always forget the name of it um there you go flames get look at them look at those look at all those dragons in the background nowhere near any of us doing no damage whatsoever because we dictated where those pedestals have dropped um that, that's honestly the big so many people i see now still don't do that mechanic and i'm like what are you doing It make this fight so much easier for you they'll basically be running all around the arena and then the main boss will fire those pedestals all randomly around the arena which means when she again randomly brings out the dragon flame mechanic she'll be hitting you from all these flames in different angles either now because they're all stacked in the corner jobs are good then. and then essentially now all you're going to do is focus on making sure you watch the circle mechanics that come around the boss um 
you know don't obviously stand in them oh this one this is the only other mechanic so you see this one here now she'll call this one out as well so just keep an eye out essentially what she'll do she normally picks one player once these drag so one dragon each will come from each pedestal so again if you keep all the pedestals in in one corner like we've done here and bar the starting one uh all the dragons will come from and they go in like a straight line direction but they'll come from one one location so you can see them all they're not coming from all different locations like a crazy motorway or something you know um so watch out for this bit it'll basically fire it, it don't even think it's a dragon it's like a demon beam i'm just noticing a face in there it's like a demon beam um and it'll fire them in a straight line coming from the pedestal aimed at the one player that it wanted to target so all you gotta do is just walk out of the way just that simple you walk out of the way of that one you can see here there walk out of the way done go back to dps and the boss all the simple mechanics as you know all the circles that are that are appearing this one again move away do as much range damage as you can this final fight is actually easier with more range players all your dexterity players if you've got if you've all got bows and you want to switch the bows to the final fight makes it a lot easier uh the uh, the tank can probably just use a spear for the perforate and the enfeebling skewer which will reduce the damage that the boss does to you and then also massively increase the damage that you do to the boss so there it is guys that is the dynasty uh, ultimate guide i'll try and trim down the video so it's not much longer than 30 minutes and um, hopefully you enjoyed this guide if you did all the usual youtube stuff like and subscribe comment section down below if you found this helpful if you think i missed any mechanics again that's important because i'm not saying i'm world class and perfect at the game i'm pretty good at the game but i'm not perfect right so if i've missed anything comment section down below because then that way if anybody else sees the guide and misses something we can explain it to them and if you'd like me to do any more guide videos on anything else in the game first of all check out my videos library on youtube check me out on twitch i'll put all the links all the way down at the bottom of the screen check me out on all of those uh, watch me live if you like the videos let me know in the comments if you want any more videos let me know in the comments um and yeah subscribe the more subscribers will get the more videos i'll make so uh, yeah cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next one